Meet the only super heavy tank built by the United States, the T-28 or later known as the T-95. Hello and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. After entering the war in Europe, the US knew that it was just a matter of time until they will face the German fortifications and that they will need a weapon that will be able to reduce heavy fortifications. The need for an assault tank was first identified in 1943. The T-28 T-95 was designed to be used for attacking the heavy defenses expected of the Siegfried Line along the western borders of Germany. The 105mm T-5E1 gun selected was known to have very good performance against concrete and expected to be extremely effective at reducing heavy fortifications. By the time the vehicle passed trials, the German Siegfried Line had already been infiltrated and overwhelmed by the Allied forces, so the designers decided to send the T-28 T-95 tanks to fight on the Japanese mainland later in the war but Japan surrendered before the tank was finished. Unlike the German Mouse or Tiger II, it did not have a turret, but a fixed casemate mount instead for its main armament similar to the German Jagdpanzers, the 105mm gun with 62 rounds. It could only elevate from 19.5 degrees to minus 5 degrees and traverse from 10 degrees right to 11 degrees left of the center line. The T-28 T-95 more closely resembled an assault gun and was redesignated as T-95 gun motor carriage in 1945. But in June 1946, the vehicle was redesignated again as Super Heavy Tank T-28. The original plan was to build five prototype vehicles with a production total of 25. Its total weight when fully equipped was an incredible 95 tons and had a length of 36 feet 11.1 meters and a width of 14 feet 4.39 meters. To lower ground pressure, instead of two tracks, it used four tracks that projected forward of the hull, each 23 inches 584 millimeters wide, and this gave the tank its iconic look. The outer tracks could be detached within two hours for rail transport. The armor was very thick compared to other tanks of the time, up to 12 inches 305 millimeters thick on the front. This was considered heavy enough to provide protection from the German 88 millimeters gun used as tank and anti-tank guns. Its engine was a gasoline-powered Ford V8, delivering 500 horsepower at 2,600 revolutions per minute through the torquematic transmission, which left the vehicle underpowered and with a top speed of about 8 miles per hour. 13 kilometers per hour. Due to its extreme weight and low engine power, the T-28 had extremely limited obstacle crossing ability and could not cross any of the portable bridges available at the time, and so was considered impractical in the field and not suitable for production. Two prototypes of the T-28 were built. They underwent evaluation at the Aberdeen Proving Ground and Fort Knox facilities until 1947. The T-28 never went into service due to the obsolete design, high maintenance costs, and the heavy weight, which prevented it from being transported across seas. Work on it ended before completion as the War Department decided to stop the development of vehicles of that sort of weight and the T-28 program terminated in October 1947. By this point, the T-29 and T-30 turreted heavy tank designs had been built. The T-29 mounted the same gun as the T-28 in a conventional rotating turret. The T-30 was developed with a larger caliber gun and more powerful engine. Today there is only one surviving and it was found in 1974, abandoned in a field at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. The fact that it was lost and forgotten is probably what saved it from being scrapped. Camouflaged in the middle of some bushes, it is unknown where it spent the last 27 years. It is the sole remaining example of these tanks and was exhibited at the Patton Museum of Cavalry and Armor in Kentucky and after this it was displayed in Fort Benning, Georgia.